Hi, I am Dr. Ray Hoson. Today I'll be answering questions asked in R.O. Hoson pep talk. These questions are selected for educational purpose and for refinement and amplification after being answered. Take note that my answers will be my personal TPORs, thoughts, perceptions, opinions, and recommendations. The topic of the questions is second opinion as it relates to patient empowerment. There are four questions which I selected to answer. These are question number one, is it wise for patients to seek second opinion all the time? Question number two, are there certain circumstances that second opinion must be done, such as when a patient is having a critical illness? Question number three, can we rely on plurality in second opinions as a basis for decision making? And question number four, is it professionally ethical for doctors to feel offended when patients plan to seek a second opinion? Question number one, is it wise for patients to seek second opinion all the time? It is not wise for patients to seek second opinion all the time, only as needed or as indicated. There are benefits as well as potential harms in second opinions. The benefit is facilitation of proper problem solving and decision making. Potential harms could be confusion because of so many differing opinions, getting wrong advice, and doing wrong problem solving and decision making. The foremost objective indication for second opinion should be if the first physician is not explaining or advising well using rational patient management processes in diagnosis and treatment. If he does, there may be no need for a second opinion. If he does not, there is a need for a second opinion. Here is a diagram of the patient management process framework just to give you an, an idea on what I am referring to. I will not discuss it here, but I would provide a link in the description box in this video. Question number two, are there certain circumstances that second opinion must be done, such as when a patient is having a critical illness? The foremost objective indication for second opinion should be if the first physician is not explaining or not advising well using rational patient management processes in diagnosis and treatment. If he does, there may be no need for a second opinion. If he does not, there is a need for a second opinion. This foremost indication applies to all kinds of patients' conditions, whether they are in the critical stages or not. In a patient with critical illness, the same principle applies. Question number three, can we rely on plurality in second opinions as a basis for decision-making? Simply going by plurality of opinions is not a strong, not to say valid, a reason in seeking a second opinion compared to the foremost indication mentioned above. Going by plurality 
of opinions is no assurance that the recommendation is correct and should be adopted. One may, one may end up choosing the most popular medical opinion rather than the most rational one backed up by good processes. A scenario to illustrate the potential harm of plurality in second opinions. One physician using the rational patient management process gives recommendation A. Two other physicians not using the rational patient management process, just using trends and fads in medicine, give the same recommendation B. If plurality is used, recommendation B will be adapted. However, recommendation A is supposed to be the better one as it is derived from rational processes. It will not be a problem if the plurality of opinions came from those who used the rational patient management process in making recommendations. So if one seeks second opinion, beware of the danger of seeking from physicians who do not use the patient management process to explain and advise. Question number four, is it professionally ethical for doctors to feel offended when patients plan to seek a second opinion? All patients have the right to seek second opinion for whatever reasons they may have. Nobody can stop them. This is based on the premise that all patients have the right to make their own choices and be the primary decision maker with regards to their health concerns and issues. All doctors should be aware of this right of the patients and should respect their plans. Professionally and ethically, they should not feel offended when patients plan to seek a second opinion. This ends the ROJ pep talk Ask Dr. Ray Hosson session. I have answered the four questions selected and I hope you understood clearly my, unders my answers. Thank you for watching my video. I welcome comments and more questions. Please place them in the comment box below. If you like my video, click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share to your relatives and friends. Help me promote patient empowerment program in the Philippines. Thank you and goodbye.